what are mobile radios? I guess that's a, a good place to start. We're gonna talk about some of the advantages, disadvantages, and the things that you really need to know when you're trying to set up WinLink specifically to operate with a mobile radio. So when you're talking mobile radios, you're really talking the form factor more than anything. It's a small, compact radio. Usually the display is either on the front or it's got a removable faceplate. They're originally designed to be installed inside of a vehicle, but they're a lot more flexible. And we'll look at a lot of different examples for that. So a lot of what you're looking at is the form factor. The next factor which kind of defines mobile radios is typically there's more power than your, your typical HT or handheld radio that we talked about last week. So handhelds usually top out at about five watts, whereas your mobile radios typically will be 25 or 50 watts. And some mobile radios will even go up to 100 watts, depending on the capabilities and the specs that you have. One thing about the power capabilities, when you're setting up to operate WinLink, even though you have that higher power radio, you are gonna to wanna to back the power down initially, especially if you're sending via say VARA HF or VARA FM. These are modes that are designed to have very low signal to noise ratios. So if you crank up the power too much, you may find out that you're over modulating your system and you might be slowing your traffic down. So if you're having trouble making your connections, oftentimes one of the tips to making your connection go a lot smoother is to go from high power down to medium power or maybe even down to low power to be able to make that connection and sometimes you'll see your speeds increase quite a bit when you're looking to buy a mobile radio, you definitely want to look for a mobile radio that has either a data port, and that could be in a variety of different formats, um, such as a lot of the Yesus and the Kenwoods all have a six pin DIN on them. Other radios will have a, a DB9 connection, and others will have more of, the, more of the more modern radios will have an actual USB connection directly on them. That really helps you in making your connections between your radio and your computer when you want to do any digital mode and especially when you're operating with WinLink. <clears throat> Other things that uh, come into play with mobile radios is many of these radios, not all, but many of these radios can be all mode and all band. And that can be really important, especially if you're into emergency communications. If you find a mobile radio that you're capable of doing HF as well as VHF, UHF, sideband, all of these different formats, FM, so that you're able to send traffic via any means that you need to when you are in the field. And that can be a real, real advantage to you. Other, other things that come usually with mobile radios is almost always they, they ship with a mounting bracket for the radio itself. And this can be really helpful when you're putting together either a go kit, you're gonna mount the radio in your vehicle, or maybe you're just putting together a set for your desk and you wanna mount it say underneath of a shelf. You'll see some examples of how you can use the mounting brackets as we walk through today's slides. Mobile radios are typically a lot more rugged as well than your typical handheld radios and certainly more rugged than a lot of the base stations. That's kind of a quick rundown of what mobile radios are, and they are very similar to handheld radios. And when you start talking about how you're going to use mobile radios with WinLink specifically, you're going to use a lot of the same tools that we talked about last week. So things like the digi rigs that are out there. Digi rigs are great because you can connect a variety of different radios to them and you're really only swapping out the cables for them. The other super common one that we really like is the Signal Link. This again, it's a USB device. It's an external sound card. You're able to have some controls on the front of the unit, which is very nice compared to the DigiRig. DigiRig, you're doing it all inside of software. Signal Links, you've got those controls on the front so you can make a little bits of adjustments here and there. You can change the jumpers inside so you can map it to various different radios and you can just swap the cables out. So a very flexible device. One that we didn't talk about too much last week week is very similar to the signal link it's actually a little bit higher end than what the signal link is these are by master communications these are the dra boards and these are great interfaces that connect via usb very similar to the signal link with the controls on the front as well very good high quality for doing wind link and a lot of the shares operators have moved to these as their uh, interface of choice when they're doing vara 
Other interfaces you're going to find that are common to mobile radios are going to be things like your TNCs, the Cantronics, and there's a variety of these that are out there. We talked about these briefly last week, but part of the challenge with using many of these different devices with handheld radios is that they're so much larger than the handheld itself. When you're talking about a mobile, they pair very nicely with the size of the mobile radio. Pactor becomes an option when you start moving into mobile radio rigs. I know these are very expensive, but the speeds that come out of them are quite high. They're very robust, and in certain conditions, they are going to outperform pretty much anything out there. Although you are seeing Vara HF specifically uh, compete very directly in some situations and sometimes even exceed the capabilities as to what Pactor does. So it's just another tool for you to have in your toolbox. Box, depending on the specific needs. For instance, if you are a shares operator, you are going to have a Pactor modem and you likely will have some way to do VARA as well. As an amateur, you may or may not get into the realm of the Pactors. Another interface that we didn't talk about last week, and you can find these on repeater builders. These are the RA boards. It has a DB9 connector on it, and these plug in specifically into the Alinko mobile radios into the, the DB9 connector on the back, and they've got a little USB. USB adapter. These are a great little teeny tiny sound card. I've got, I'm gonna actually switch over to my overhead cam because I have all of these here. This is that RA board that's there. You can see it's really small. One of the things that I really don't like about this board is when you when you do have the, the Alinko. So this is the Alinko DR135. And you can see on the back of it, it's got that DB9 connector back here. When you plug this thing into that connector, one thing that you'll notice is that there's not enough space that's left between the shape of the circuit board and where these holes are to be able to put a locking screw in those. And so it's very difficult to get a locking screw in there to lock this in place. So if you're building this into, say, some sort of a mobile deployment, you may have a challenge with this board coming out. However, for a gateway, for a VHF gateway, this is an excellent little setup. For a two meter gateway, these DR135s are really relatively cheap. And this is pretty much one of the cheapest interface options that you can go with. The other options that I have here, I do have my signal link. I've got my DigiRig. You saw each of those last week. I also have my Pactor. This is a P4. It's the DR7400. This is the lower cost of the two P4 Dragons. Now that amateur radio, we're allowed to use both Pactor 3 and Pactor 4 for the higher speeds. These start to make a little more sense. If you do go with one of these Pactor modem, I really suggest getting the Bluetooth board that's inside of it. I, I went ahead and added it as an as an add-on, and I have found that I prefer connecting my Pactor modem to my Surface via Bluetooth and then just have one cable that connects the Pactor into whichever radio that I'm operating with. It works extremely well, and it's really nice to cut down some of your cables. This is a Cantronics TNC, and that has a bunch of serial connectors that are out on the back that you're gonna, you may need to connect up. A lot of mobile radios will also have built-in TNCs, such as the, the Kenwood D710G. That's the one that I use. And when I'm, when I'm using my Kenwood, if I'm gonna use packet with it, I just use the serial DB9 cable on it, and then it goes over to the Kenwood uh, DB6 cable on the back, and this is what's plugging into the radio itself. In order to plug this into pretty much any modern computer though, most are not having the serial ports on them anymore. So you will need at that point, some kind of USB to serial adapters. These are excellent ones. These are the trip lights. If you find an older one, you you may find it as the key span. The model is the USA 19QW and on the, the new trip light, it's the 19, HS for high speed. These are really good and they're very high quality to be able to make all of those connections. They're pretty reasonably priced and you can just take your serial connection cable, plug it into, into that and then plug this into your computer and then this end into your radio if you've got that built-in TNC. What really changes when you start talking about mobile radios with WinLink is you're able to open the doors to all of the different WinLink modes. Depending on the radio that you have, you can open up HF, VHF, UHF, 
Packet, Pactor, Robust Packet, Winlink, RDOP, Vara HF, Vara FM. You get access to all of those. And that really, if you if you look at it globally, you're looking at approximately 500 HF RMS gateways that are scattered around the world. And that's roughly about 1,000 VHF and UHF RMS gateways globally as well. About half of those are all located inside of the United States and the other half are located outside. So there's pretty much a gateway that you should be able to hit most anywhere. The other piece of a mobile station is really how flexible they are to be able to deploy them in many, many different ways. So this is a picture that I took during my technician class. So I'm, I'm taking my technician class for at the very beginning and they're, they, one of the instructors brought their station and they set it up here. And it was this mobile station that was set up. This is an ICOM 7100. You can see over here in the corner, this is the body of the radio is in here and they had the power supply all mounted in. This is a little case to be able to just mount those to the mounting holes on the side of the mobile radios mount directly into that. And I just thought this was so cool as a way you could take this radio kind of with you anywhere and you had all the power to be able to do whatever you wanted. It, this one has the batteries external and, and so forth. That kind of started me down this path of seeing various implementations of mobile radio installs as I became more experienced and I would, you know, get a new piece of equipment. I, I got a, a Kenwood D710G as a, as a mobile rig. And when I would set it up at different events, I would oftentimes set it up in that kind of a format. Oh, we'll just, we'll create a little stack. Here I was using Winlink. I was just using the built-in TNC that was inside of this. And I just had a simple cable coming off and I would plug into my laptop and I would be able to send my Winlink traffic via just the radio and, and really nothing else besides, you know, having the antenna and power and so forth there. So later on, I, I saw this go box that was set up and this was really nice. You can see I put some arrows here because this is a real nice, it's a small vertical Pelican case. It was very nicely designed, very well laid out. This has the, the mobile radio that's back here and it's mounted right in the surface. But I put the arrows in here to show here's the signal link. They have a USB port that's drawn out to the outside. So you're able to plug a computer directly into that. And it attaches into the signal link over here. Here, there's the data port, the data connection port that was split off from the radio, and there's a little switch so you can do voice or, or data. And I just thought this was so nicely laid out as a way to get in here. There's a little antenna port. Everything is just cleanly done, very well thought out. So, uh, of course, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to go through and I'm going to try and do my own version of that. Now, instead of building out, I didn't have the skills to be able to build out the top plate or do all of the wiring. So I got a plastic ammo can. I picked it up. It was like, I don't know, 10 or 15 or $20 or so and got some different adapters, started plugging them in. I'd seen some other examples of some of the battery boxes that had been created. And so I just figured, well, let me go through and just build this out myself. And when I built it out, I built it for my Kenwood. And this is pretty much what I've carried my Kenwood around ever since for, for many years now. Inside of the box, here's the body of the radio that sits in there. I keep a 30 amp hour battery in there. So it'll run for basically a couple of weeks on just this one battery power. If I'm just doing casual use, if I'm doing an event, it'll easily get me through a full event, even two days just on this battery power. I have the cabling for, for the packet station. This is some, some audio cables that are here, but I do have the, the packet cabling that just comes up and it's always just tucked right in there. I have the little, uh, the little, the little adapter in there. So all of that is, just, it fits. And this is mounted right with the edge of the bracket right on the edge of the, the case. And then I also have enough room still inside of here. I can put the head unit in, I can put the microphone in, but I can also put my signal link in there and the cables. So now I'm able to do Vara FM as well as pack it all just with this really compact, very small box to be able to, to work with that. And I've deployed this in many different areas. So I've, I do a lot of different event support. So this is one of the marathons and, and I was running both APRS as well as WinLink and using the setup for voice. And I just take my laptop, set it out, pull a couple of cables out and it all works pretty well. This is another marathon that I set up and operated with. And, and you can see one of the things that I've, as I've 
grown as an operator, my gear has also expanded as well. And so it tends to spill out of the box a bit more. The head unit here, I've just gone ahead and just pulled the body out of the box. And I'm using the box now as just a battery box at this point. And I'm just spreading the gear out. But that, that one very simple mobile unit allows me to have a lot of flexibility as to how I go through and deploy with it. It was at one of these events that was the next little bit of inspiration that I had. Now, this is a vehicle, this is by an operator who's now a silent key. He was a really good friend of mine and I worked, it was one of the very first marathons that I worked and I was partnered with him. This is a remarkable vehicle, by the way. He took this thing off-road, he drove back and forth across Africa with it. It's a remarkable rally car that he built out. You can see the ham radio antennas that are here off the back of it. Inside of that vehicle, you can see down here, just in front of the stick shift is where they had the head units for their radio installed. Now he did have this rigged up so he could do Winlink. He literally just had a cable very similar to the setup that you saw David in the very beginning use with his vehicle as well. So you can mount the, the radios in a place where it's convenient to be able to work with them, primarily work with them as voice radios and then when you do need to operate, say, WinLink or some other digital mode, you can simply have the cabling that runs around into a convenient place so you can pull it out and start working with it. So with this in mind, I went ahead and just started modifying my own vehicle. So this is my Ford Ranger, and I needed to drive back and forth across the country. I needed to go from California back over to the East Coast and bring back a load of equipment with me. So I rigged up my truck for the trip, and it's pretty much stayed rigged in a similar way to this. The cabling is all there. I don't leave the radios in all the time, but I installed three different antennas. I have up on the top of the roof rack, I've got a two meter, 70 centimeter antenna. This initially was used for packet and two meter voice. Now it runs Winlink and any other traffic on it. This is actually a tri-band antenna. It's the it's the diamond tri-band antenna that's set up there. Um, up on the front of the vehicle, I mounted an HF monoband 20 meter diamond antenna. And I use this a lot when I'm traveling, if especially on a long road trip, if I rig up the HF rig in the truck, then it gives me the chance to be able to, to operate and work on this trip across the country. I was going through New Mexico when I was talking to a station in Japan on this rig mobile. It was, it was really, really cool. I was driving up through the Central Valley and I was talking to a pilot in there in a plane that was about 100 miles off of Seattle one day. So it, it works really, really well. I also had my CB uh, rigged up in the truck, especially doing long road trips, oftentimes having a CB in the truck is really helpful because then you're able to communicate with a lot of the truckers that are on the road and get a lot of local information. So as a communications idea, this worked extremely well. Now inside of the vehicle, this is how I've rigged it. I have my two meter 70 centimeter, this is my Kenwood, and I will just pull it out of the go box. I'll install it here in the vehicle as well. This is the KX3 and the pan adapter for it. And so I would use these for operating on HF. I'd usually put the amp somewhere in the back. So I would have a hundred watts to be able to work with. I would just mount the, the CB up here in the front. And then I put a little small angle bracket. I just mounted it right to the dashboard. And I'll oftentimes just hang whatever HT that I have with me to that. It ends up being a really nice way to run like APRS or simply just have your HT handy to be able to operate with. Now, the mounts that I use for this are the Lido mounts. These are a really nice solution. Let me go ahead and switch over to the overhead cam so you can see this is the this is the arm that's in the vehicle. It mounts down on the floorboards. It's just a bolt that goes under the seat bolt and then it's a pretty flexible arm. The front of these mounts have these two little pins this is what the the Lido mount how that how that works. And then you get a bunch of little adapters if I can get this off. Let's see which way does it go? There it goes. It goes off like really sticks on there sometimes. Um, there's a little slot that's in, in these so that the mount can just attach on. And then with that mount, what you do is you get various different brackets. So this is a bracket for the KX3 radio. And so I can just uh, bolt that to there. On the bottom of the 705, there's a quarter 20 thread and I've been able to mount 
the 705 to the Lido mount if I was going to use that in my vehicle as well. So that that creates a really nice way to mount a variety of different radios, and they all stay pretty much on, on this pole. I don't leave them in the vehicle all the time, but if I'm going to do a long road trip, I'll go ahead and set those up like that. It's not really good to be focused on what's going on on the radio while you're driving, so it's very easy to turn this entire pole around, and if you've got a a passenger with you, especially if they're a ham, they're able to access and operate all of that gear as well. As part of the these Lido mounts, Scott uses a Lido mount in his truck as well. There's a couple of other manufacturers that do similar kinds of things. There's the Ram mount system. Whichever system you go with, just pick one and it'll it should be able to work for you. This is the mobile station that's set up or the Winlink station that's set up for the ham radio operator at the Ventura County EOC. And you can see that that their setup that they use, it, they have the, the power supply down here at the bottom, a Cantronics. Uh, they do a lot of packet. They've got two monoband packet stations that are set up here. And then up on top is where they have their Kenwood for their voice with the two different sides on it. And they just have a laptop that comes out in the front to be able to, to operate that. This is what the station that's set up at the state EOC looks like. And as you, you kind of look at this, there's a lot of different radios with a lot of things going on here. This is inside the radio room. But as you kind of look around, you start noticing all of the different interfaces. Many of these radios are all capable of doing either Winlink or some other sort of digital mode. And that entire top shelf are all mobile radios. Now, these are not mounted in any kind of crazy way. They, they just stack up nice and neat to be able to operate and organize for your station for your for the operator to be able to cleanly get at whatever needs to be communicated as we look at some other resources this is inside of a magoo it's a it's a mobile unit all of the radios that you see there in that rack are all different mobile radios that are all set up and the, on the left hand side that's an acu which allows the folks operating that vehicle to cross repeat any of those different mobile radios that they need to and they can set up a lot of really flexible communication network if they get deployed with their agency and so this is this is another cal oes resource that's there many ham groups whether an aries group an acs group a racy's group an oxcom group they'll have many of their mobile radios that are set up inside of some kind of a mobile command center usually it's a trailer or a larger vehicle that the members of their team are able to to operate their next control out of inside many of these are set up in some kind of way like this there's usually some sort of a desk that's set up for operators to be able to sit in there and operate usually some large screens to be able to collaborate information on and then many of the radios are all mobile radios that are all mounted usually using the the mobile bracket they'll usually mount them underneath of a shelf or underneath of a cabinet so that the operator has a place to be able to sit and work at the table as well as operate the radio many Many of these stations get set up so that there is a digital interface that's also connected and usually there's just a simple cable that's there to be able to plug in a laptop and be able to operate. This is the mobile command center for Ventura County and this is one of the net control operators that was sitting here and you can see there's the mobile station sitting directly underneath It's just mounted on the shelf and it creates a really nice way for the operators to work however the operator is finding themselves most comfortable so any of these stations could be uh, windlink stations if they need to be. Here's another way that mobile stations can oftentimes get deployed. So this is at one of the marathons, and this is one of the one of the operators that was on one of the chase bikes, and they have their mobile station in their backpack. They just have a, a microphone that comes over their shoulder, and they're able to operate. Now, he was mostly operating voice as well as running APRS. This next operator took it a step further. They put a little trailer on the back of their bike, and they had a full mobile station mounted in the back there, and they could even run Winlink if they needed to if they wanted to stop they get a laptop back there they could just plug in and to be able to operate they had their antenna running off the back of the trailer which ended up being really nice they just be able to route the the microphone up there and they have the control unit is mounted up to the handlebar so they can see the head unit while they're while they're biking along 
This is more of a commercial installation of a mobile unit, and this would be one that would be built out to a little more durability, but the idea is still the same. You've got the radio that's in here. You have a way to be able to power the radio, the speaker that's built in so you can hear over the radio, and there's even a mag mount that's attached to this. Now, these did not have any digital interfaces that you could add, but it would be very easy to be able to add something like that to these. Another way that you'll see mobile radios commonly mounted, you'll see them mounted on a board of some kind and then have all the various different components just screwed down to the board so you can take the whole unit and just kind of easily move it around and have it so you can deploy it very quickly, set down, plug a laptop in it and operate Winlink or whatever different digital mode that you want to operate. But you're not limited to do something really fancy like that. Many operators will choose to simply use their backpack, carry the different gear with them for their mobile station, just keep it in their bag, pull the gear out that you need when you need it, and not have so much of a rigid, structured deployment. Uh, others will take the approach of taking that Pelican case. Pelican cases are excellent cases. Those are the ones that I use all the time for most of my expensive gear that I'm going to carry with me to somewhere they really do do a great job of just protecting all of your gear. This operator's chosen to basically just stack all the gear inside of the Pelican so it's well protected. But when they get there, they can just spread out the station that they need to. Here you can see they're using uh, one of the Yesu mobile radios. They've got their signal link running in here. They even have a mesh node that's set up in here so they can operate however they need to with this fairly small compact case. Others will take the approach, well, they'll build out these more well-designed gator boxes. Here, this was by KK6DA. David built out this kit, and he's got his signal link in here. He's got a mesh networking speakers that are in here so you can really hear what's going on with the radio. A nice little way to be able to take the cable that comes out and just plugs into the laptop. And there's a slot even for the laptop to be able to slide into this to be able to operate. It's a really nicely designed station to be able to operate both voice and digital. Digital. 